nations, but before Islam, the Arab nation, like 2,300 years ago, um, would force face coverings over their people as form of submission. Um, and that's one of the reasons why in certain religions, women are forced to, to cover up their face because, um, it's, it's a, it's a form of submission. It's a form of not having identity. You know, I just dropped my, um, one of my girls off at school and I saw these kids, um, riding their scooters, little kids riding their scooters with masks on. And how sad is it? You know, people are saying, it's just two weeks. It's just two weeks. This is almost a year ago. And I remember, I don't know, you got, for those of you that were following me a year ago, I was saying this at the very beginning, like, this isn't going to end. This isn't going to stop until we stop it. It's not going to stop. And now we're into it almost a whole year. And here we are. Uh, I don't think we understand the damage, the psychological damage that's happening to these kids that are growing up in this world of fear. Um, media is fearful. The government, everything's fearful. I just drove by, I was coming back down from Pocatello and I just drove by this, uh, um, uh, billboard that said new strand, like a new strand or new strains of COVID new strains, same rules, mask up. That's the propaganda that's, that's in uh, Salt Lake. And, and so I've been thinking about, now I could be wrong on all of these things. Okay. Uh, good morning, by the way. Um, I've been thinking about this, like what it means, because everything is symbolic in the spiritual sense. Everything is symbolic. Like everything symbols, God uses symbols in almost, in almost everything like the sun, for example. Um, the sun is the source of everything to our earth. It's the source of light, life, uh, hope. When you see the sun, there's a, there's a, there's a calmness, a stillness, everything, all the energy. Well, that's, that represents something. The sun was named after the sun, which is, is the son of God. Um, uh, it represents Christ. Um, everything dark represents the adversary. So in this spiritual war that's happening right now, you're seeing this, this constant opposition of all in all things constantly. And, and when God sends out signs and, um, symbols, well, so does the devil. And that's why so many people that can see it are saying, Hey, this isn't a good thing because it it just feels evil. It just feels like when I have something over my face, I don't have an identity and there's no smiling and there's no, um, there's no personal interaction. And I, I believe it's because Satan not only wants us to be miserable, like unto himself, but he wants us to literally have no identity in hell. He wants us to, he doesn't, we won't have names. Uh, we will be called by our sins um, forever. And so that's why he's trying to get people in this state of of falling in line, no identity. You're just going to do what you're told. Um, and then on the other hand, God is trying to have us have identity. He's trying to continue to gather us, to see each other, to smile. Um, that's why he created, he created us, us with immune systems that can fight off a virus with a 99.991 survivability rate. Um, but for whatever reason, as we have turned to the wrong God on this, we're looking towards government officials and health department officials and the media that are making rules up as they go. It's their own doctrine. It's a, it's, it's their own church in a way. It's a, it's a cult. And, and, we're either following that it's one way or the other. So do we, do we believe in God or not? Like, do we, do we believe that, that Jesus is the answer to this, that, um, we can be healed through the spirit? Like, what is it that we believe as a Christian nation? Um, and so, so that I was thinking about this whole, like, this whole push, like, cause I knew this whole sexual revolution was just kind of 
almost hibernating for about four years. I knew that's what was happening. As soon as Joe Biden started talking about transgenders and in military, look, everything I'm about to say is not against people that choose to mutilate their body parts and want to, you know, change sex. It is a mental illness, by the way. Um, John Hopkins University. It is a gender dysphoria. It's a mental illness. So why is it okay that that hospitals say this is a mental illness, but then when we over here as just regular citizens just thinking say that this is a mental illness, why is it that we're the bigots when it's science? Like that's the science of it. It's a mental condition when you think that you're an op the opposite sex. Um, and so... Um, I knew that this was going to happen. And soon as it, soon as it did, it's starting to happen really, really fast. That if you don't agree with this, you're a bigot. If you don't allow men to dress up like women and come down in women's sports, you're somehow a bigot. And so now you have the, the conservative, um, God fearing governor of the state of Utah, um, who will not pass law, making it illegal for men men with uh, a bone structure with muscles that are just um, genetically and physically stronger than women that would dominate women um he won't make it illegal for for them to um compete against women these the, the women that have put their entire lives and their hearts into into these sporting events and then you have a mediocre man that comes in and just wipes everybody out and so years ago, we had this, you know, remember the hats? Everyone wanted to wear those pink hats because of Women's Day. So you've got all these women marching all over the streets, um, trying to get rights that they already have. And then it was this whole believe women, believe them, believe them, no matter what, no matter what the story is, believe them. And so it was this whole women like movement again. Um, and, and, and what happened? now we've shifted into we're we're slowly just canceling women because in the end the devil he doesn't want anybody to have an identity and so you see this sexual revolution that's happening you see this um you see this everybody's taking away from identity identity to where nobody's going to have one and and it's it's a symbol the devil himself well, you can say he, he he's a man, right? But he doesn't have body parts. And so I believe that that he's trying to get everybody to that same state where nobody has gender, nobody has identity. It's all part of going closer to the darkness. See, now God, on the other hand, God wants us to have an identity. In fact, he wants us to become just like him. He wants us to give give us everything that he has. And, um, and that's, that's, and we're just kind of stuck in between these two things. And so when the governor of the great state of Utah is standing there in front of the TV cameras, um, talking about why he's going to basically cancel women. And he said, you know, and he started crying, you know, because now he feels like every time he speaks, he's got to bring out the tears, um, uh, he's, he's saying things like, we just don't know. Have you talked to, have you talked to a trans kid? These people are just trying to, to live. When you're telling somebody over and over that they're the victim, what do you think they're going to believe? That, that now if you disagree with them and if they happen to take their own life, um, now we're the ones that are, are guilty of it of them taking their own life, if you're transgender, what if we taught our society that you're not a victim? What if we taught that committing suicide is a choice? Um, I've had friends, I've had family um, that have had close people commit suicide. I've walked into it. Um, as a cop, I've seen uh, more suicides than you want to even imagine I'm, I'm telling you it's it's a it's horrible thing but ultimately in the end it's a choice and so to placate to a few people um 
to not make it against the law, to to compete against women because because they're fighting for their lives is only adding to the problem, Spencer Cox. It's just adding to the problem. You don't understand. It's a um, it's like telling a minority community that you can't get out of this. So we're here to help you. So vote for me because I'll help you. When in reality, if you just realize that we all, we all have equal um, opportunity, because that's what America is. We're the most diverse country in the entire world. We're not racist. We're not sexist. In fact, it's the other way around. You know, when I was a police officer at Salt Lake City Police, they had this uh, uh, diversity day, right? And so we we're all sitting there. There's probably 40 cops in there. And this woman, uh, she stands up. She's an Asian woman, really nice lady. She stands up and she, she proceeds to explain how Salt Lake City Corporation uh, doesn't have enough minorities. And so, you know, I raised my hand and they're like, Mutsos, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> and I was like, so what you're meaning to say is that as a white person, you know, what does that even mean, by the way? It's like my, my ancestors are from Greece, right? So shouldn't I have the same, shouldn't I be in these categories? No, because you're, you're a European. <laughs> anyway, so I said, as a white person, um, if I put my application in to promote in the Salt Lake City Police Department against somebody who's in a minority class or a woman, they're going to get the job over me if everything looks the same on paper. And the Asian woman said, well, yeah, how else are we going to do it? How, how else are we going to do it? In other words, we're going to discriminate against you because you're white. Because we're trying to show how diverse we are. We're trying to show that, um, that we're so tolerant. But this is what's happening, okay? If you're in a corporation or if you're in a government or um, a government entity that's doing this crap, you need to call it out. Because what they're doing is they're the ones that are using, you know, they, they went, they're the ones that are using minorities. They're the ones that are using women. You know, I went to, I went to a, uh, um, uh, this diversity class and I called them out, you know, the Salt Lake City police, at the time, they hired a chief, okay? They hired a chief of police that was a woman. Oh, okay, well, what's wrong with that, Eric? She wasn't a cop. They, hi they hired a woman who was a chief of police, who was over lieutenants, who was over um, uh, sergeants, who was over regular officers, and she wasn't a police officer. So she had bars, she had a badge, she had lights and sirens in her car, but she didn't have a gun. And so now everybody's like, doesn't know what to say because they're now taking orders from this, this chief of police who's a woman, but not a cop because they wanted to show how diverse they are. Well, and then what naturally happens? Well, if you're not qualified, then, then you're not going to be able to do the job and then they're going to have to get rid of you. And then what do they get sued for? Discrimination. They're creating their own monster that eats them every single time. So they'll go to people, you know, they went to one of my, uh, and I just say these things because this is what it is in, in most organizations. They want to show that they're so diverse. So they'll handpick the, the minority and they'll handpick the gay person and they'll handpick, um, you know, whoever's on this victim kind of totem pole and then they'll they'll hire him let's talk about who's the sexist they went to somebody in my police department and they said hey you're polynesian we need a polynesian sergeant how racist is that how demeaning is that you're just using me for my race Who who's the racists so the answer is we don't talk about it you know we don't we shouldn't talk about it but now we've got to talk about it and teach people, hey, America isn't racist. <laughs>